Welcome to the week ahead. Here are the stories we'll be watching in the next few days. A Fed rate rise is on the cards from the Federal Open Market Committee on Wednesday. The Bank of Japan meets at the end of the week and is expected to leave monetary policy unchanged. And voters in France will head to the polls for the final legislative vote. We'll start here in the U.S. The Federal Reserve is likely to pull the trigger on a second rate increase this year, confirming Chair Janet Yellen and her colleagues have not yet allowed soft inflation data to derail their tightening plans. It's expected the central bank will lift the target range for the federal funds rate by a quarter point, going from the current not 0.75% to 1%. And investors will also be watching for any changes to the committee's intended pace of interest rate increases for the rest of the year. Sam Fleming, the U.S. economics editor, has more. The Fed's meeting on the 13th and 14th of June will be an important one. The central bank has been flagging quite clearly now that it is seriously considering an increase in short-term interest rates. The Fed has also uh, been suggesting that it is going to give us some more details about how it plans to reduce the size of its $4.5 trillion balance sheet at that meeting. That could give us a little bit of more indication of its strategy as it prepares potentially later this year to stop reinvesting the proceeds of maturing securities, bonds and mortgage-backed securities and gradually allow the size of its balance sheet to diminish and begin to unwind the quantitative easing that it put in place uh, during the financial crisis. So two big, potentially important announcements at that meeting. The backdrop is also a complicated one, however. Uh, inflation has been quite low. The latest jobs numbers uh, were quite disappointing. Uh, and so there'll be some questions to Janet Yellen, the chair, in the, in the press conference after their meeting about why exactly the Fed is so sure that now is a good time to be lifting interest rates, potentially reducing the balance sheet, when the economy is giving off very mixed signals. Now to the Bank of Japan. Since the central bank's last meeting in April, the economic news has been generally positive, with solid figures on growth, industrial production, and employment. However, inflation is still low, which means that there's little reason for the BOJ to change policy when it concludes a two-day meeting on Friday. Our Tokyo Bureau Chief Robin Harding explains what else investors should watch for from the central bank this week. The economic data since the Bank of Japan's last meeting in April has been broadly positive, so the central bank is likely to leave policy unchanged when it concludes a two-day meeting on Friday the 16th. A couple of issues to watch out for. One is the future of its 80 trillion a yen a year asset purchase target. That has become less relevant and harder to meet since it introduced a cap on 10-year yields at zero. Another is whether the BOJ wants to say anything about its eventual exit strategy from easy monetary policy. It's been very reluctant to do so so far, and that's unlikely to change much this week. Now to France with the crucial final round of legislative elections on Sunday, where we'll see if President Emmanuel Macron can follow through on his victory last month. In the first round of the elections, there were nearly 8,000 candidates vying for just 577 seats, including 11 candidates who represent French voters living overseas. Mr. Macron's brand new cross-party movement, La République en Marche, currently has no seats. But the party, which is led by political neophytes, has been gathering momentum. Michael Stothard, our Paris correspondent, has more. Mr. Macron needs to win a majority of the 577 seats in the lower house of the National Assembly in order to be sure that he can deliver on his campaign promise to liberalise the French labour market and cut public spending. His brand new cross-party movement, La République en Marche, currently has no seats. But the party has been gathering momentum and the latest polls suggest that it will win a majority something that analysts thought was highly unlikely even a few months ago. And that's what the week ahead looks like from the FT in New York.